What's up everyone? I love coffee a little bit too much. As you can see, I've got like every pour over Turkish coffee, mocha pot, whatever, even the original coffee brewing technique from Ethiopia and the wonderful Breville Barista Express. So this is my review. I hope you love it. I hope it gives you information that you're looking for. I looked at like 20 videos before I finally said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I know it's a little bit more money where I can go get a DeLonghi or whatever other um, one that's like 100 bucks, 150 bucks. But I wanted to spend a little bit more money to have something that's gonna give me a great shot, really do good on steaming the milk, and just look really aesthetically beautiful on my coffee bar that I built. Let me show it to you. So you do get four filters, two pressurized, two non-pressurized. I prefer to use the non-pressurized ones, that way I can really dial in a shot and make it exactly the way I want to. Um, your grind size, the amount of coffee that's in the porta filter, and how well you tamp it will determine how the shot gets pulled. A proper two ounce shot, which would be your two ounce, uh, two ounce uh, filter, you're gonna want about 20 grams of ground coffee, and in your single ounce or single shot, you'll want about 10 grams of coffee. What I've found that works the best for me uh, is on grind size seven. And once I put 20 grams in there, I should be pulling a 20 to 30 second shot and that will give you a pretty good espresso. And then whenever you get over to the single shot portafilter size, you should be looking at a between 18 to 22 second um, shot to pull. You can change how much uh, ground coffee goes into the portafilter by using this, which if you're constantly trying to get a different amount because of a different grind size or just for your taste preferences. Um, maybe you don't like to have as strong as of an espresso shot, so you want to you know, use less coffee, that's totally fine. I pretty much have it set right here at six o'clock, but I stop um, grinding and check my um, weight using a scale. So you want to tear out your scale for the weight of the portafilter. And then you want to start grinding, which it's super simple. You just set that in there and it grinds coffee. So we're at 20.1, 20.2. We're just going to take a few pinches of coffee out of the filter. It's pretty much close enough for me. Set the camera down so you can see the tamp a little bit better. Basically just want to go around, use your fingers on here, and make sure you're getting a nice even uh, pressed or tamped shot wipe off any remaining coffee and then I recommend pouring some hot water through just to heat everything up I just tap the single shot button again and then it's just simple lock this guy in put your mug underneath this is a warming tray so the cups stay nice and warm um, much appreciated I love that and let's go ahead and pull a double shot. What you want to look for is you're going to have pre-infusion right now, and then we're going to pull our shot. We want to be right in this gray area. It's a good spot for that to be. Perfect. You can see that good, delicious crema in there. I love that. Before I start steaming milk, I do want to say the Barista Express is a single boil machine. 
a single boiler machine, sorry. So you cannot pull the shot and steam the milk at the exact same time, which that can be a problem because a shot will die, usually within 10 seconds. So notice that middle layer. So there's dark black, there's that auburn, and then there's that cream on top. Once that middle layer is gone, which it is now, that would not be the best flavor espresso. So if you're gonna do a shot of a single espresso, you wanna drink it before that goes away. And if you're gonna make a latte or a cortado, you technically wanna have your milk in there before that goes away. And that's gonna allow those flavors to be the absolute best. The ideal drink to get the best flavors is to make sure that the milk is going in the espresso shot within 10 seconds of it pulling. So some people I've seen will uh, steam their milk before they pull the shot. That way they can, you know, be ready to pour that in as soon as the shot pulls. Um, the only thing that happens with that is the milk will begin to separate with the foam. So you get a drier foam on top. It's gonna be more difficult to make latte art, um, but it'll be great for a cappuccino. It's still gonna make a good latte. Um, probably more flavorful if you're going for the flavor but if you're going to try to make latte art and do a really beautiful drink i would recommend going ahead and making your shot first and then steaming your milk or what you could do to kind of help with that is to put a little bit of milk in the shot right after it pulls and then go ahead and steam your milk so on to steaming the steam wand has this nice rubber handle on here so you don't get burned this will get very hot as it should. Um, so what I do to clean it, I have a rag over here, a microfiber rag, a little bit wet, because you can, after you're done steaming the milk, the milk will dry. It'll be like a dry milk on the steam wand and you do not want to leave that on there. Um, so the best way to get that off, especially if it does already dry before you're finished, is to go ahead and turn your steam wand back on, let it get really hot, and then wipe it really quick after you turn it off. So to get it started, you have to kind of turn it on for like 10 to 12 seconds. So right now this is my, I have it pulled towards the steam. It's gonna start spitting out water. You wanna do that before every um, steam. That way you just get the water out of the tube. You'll see it kind of dripping out right there. You do not want that to go in your milk. What you want to go in your milk is that right there, that beautiful stuff right there. So I'm gonna pull this away. Okay, so first thing is go ahead and purge that steam wand again. Turn it off for a second. And you want to stick the frother all the way in the milk. And you want to, you don't want to have big bubbles like that. You want to be more careful. You just want to let it aerate the top of the milk a little bit. Use the spout of the pitcher to rest the steam wand in. Drop it in a little bit. It's a way to tell that your milk is ready. You want your foam to look like wet paint, which I'll show you in a minute, and you want it to be hot to touch. So right now I'm using my pinky on my left hand, and when that is getting way too hot to touch, that's when I'm gonna turn the steam wand off. So I go ahead and I wipe the steam on before I continue. And to show you the milk, it's exactly what you want it to look like right there. Micro bubbles, wet paint. Let's see if I can, I'm not gonna be able to hold the cup at the same time. with just one hand while holding it but you can tell makes excellent foam and latte art when you're not holding your phone at the same time all right so i'm going to leave my mess here and just talk about the machine a little bit um, you have the capabilities of pulling a single shot a double shot um, you can program like press program and make 
the volumes different. So if you want your single shot to be um, one ounce or one and a half ounce or a half an ounce, you can do that. Um, I won't show that in this video. I think you can find that pretty much on Breville's website, which is what I did. It's very simple. Um, when you're pulling a shot, you want to make sure that if you're doing a single, you have the single eliminated, the double, the double eliminated, and all you do is just press that button back and forth. You can change your uh, grind amount here. It's your power button. Totally recommend having the machine on for about 10 to 15 minutes before pulling your first shot. You have your grind size knob. Your steam wand is that direction. And then you can actually, if you're gonna make like an Americano, you can turn it to that. And that'll actually draw hot water out right there. Super awesome. Um, espresso range, pressure gauge. The heated mug place, I guess. I don't know what that's really called. Your hopper. What's cool about the hopper is it actually comes out with all of your beans and you can go right to, like, I'll just show you here. And set that right on there. And all your beans will drop back in there nice and simply. The only thing that I don't love is there will be beans still left in there. Uh, the best way to get those out is to go ahead and just put your porter filter back in and grind it in. I just hate throwing coffee away. Um, you technically have this little handle and you can twist this and get it out, but with coffee in the sides here and in there, it's kind of hard to twist. So I kind of just like pick out as many whole beans as I can, close it, put the porter filter in, grind, grind it out, then I can take this out really easy and I just take like a hand vacuum and just kind of suck those beans out. The only time you're going to do that though is if you're switching um, from one bean to another or you're just cleaning up for the night. So if you have friends over, you're not like going to be doing this while they're there. I don't find it that inconvenient. Um, so that just locks back into place and then... The tank in the back is removable. Sorry, I'm getting a little out of focus there. It's removable. You can pour water in. Um, you're gonna wanna do it probably every like 15 shots of espresso. So you can make, you know, a full round of espresso for friends while they're over. Um, this guy comes out. And what's nice is you can set all of your filters back here. And that's pretty cool because they're out of the way. Um, there's that little, you can't really see it. It's a terrible video right now. But there's a little guy right here that will pop up if there's too much water in here. Pretty easy to remove all of this stuff, clean it. Definitely clean it every day, every use, if you want your machine to stay in good condition. Um, Breville recommends descaling the machine once every month. Uh, depending on how much you're using it, though, if you're using it like, a crap ton, then you should descale it more often. So that's my review on the Breville. I don't really have any complaints about the machine. The one that I did, which was in the grinder, is not worth complaining about. I forgot to tell you the tamp is magnetic. It goes right up in there real easy. Um, I love my espresso maker. I love the espresso shots it makes. I like my little cortado that I made earlier. It sips really well. And that's my review on the Breville. I say go get it, if you have the money. If you don't have the money, don't go get it, because it's unwise to spend money you don't have. Anyways, God bless, have fun, enjoy coffee.